everyone and welcome to a, a new video tutorial. Well actually it's going to be a series of tutorials and the topic is going to cover how to use Beast inside of UV 3D. Now what is Beast you're probably asking? Well Beast is a lighting engine that is used to create realistic lighting such as uh, the beach, beach of the Bahamas, a sunny cavern, nighttime, area where the moon, um, maybe Mars perhaps, or in my case, where you use beasts to light up these forests of objects that I've laid out and seen in front of me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and um, open up the light mapping tab. If your setup is like mine, mine's already open, but if, you want, if you're looking for the light mapping tab, go to the window, go to light mapping, and click on it. So, the first half, first thing you'll see in the light mapping tab are object, beak, and maps. And in the in the um, editor view, you'll see a light map display, which I'll explain in greater detail in a later video. So, if I go ahead to the, if I go ahead and click on one of these objects, you notice how it will tell you the name of the object, what it is, whether or not it is marked static. Which is very important when you're making a light map. You want to ensure that the object will not be stationary and not move. The scale of the light map will allows you to fit more resolution to the light map, so you have more detail and uh, more um, and less artifacting. I'll usually leave this alone for testing purposes. The, at the atlas is another thing I usually run when I make light maps since you don't want any tile in your light maps and you want everything to be a one to one ratio now let's go to the baking tab and in this tab you see how everything is um, pretty extensive here and to light and control your light mapping the first, the first button we see here is mode and we have three options here we have single light maps which allow you to bake a single light map at a far distance so that um, you can bake um, shadows and distance. This, this works in Unity Free and in Pro as well, but the drawback to the use of the particular mode is the fact that you you lose your normal, map, normal mapping information. The next tab is Dual Light Maps, which is an option they use very frequently in the baking of light map. What this does, it will bake normal maps both near and far away, which is also why we have this um, the slider here, this um, option here called shadow distance. If I set this to zero, the entire scene will appear light mapped. Anything higher, anything higher than zero, it allow you to blend between the shadows that are light mapped and shadows that are in real time. Normally, I keep this about 200. No more than that, unless you're uh, making a really huge level where real time shadowing is crucial. The next option is directional light maps, which I will not be using in this video tutorial. The next tab is quality, which, which, is, which are two presets which tell Beast which quality setting to use. In my case, I usually leave it at high so that I can tweak my mapping the way I see fit. The next tab is called Bounces, which tells Beast how many times it bounces the photons around the scene. The minimum is zero, the maximum is four. And if I were to set this to zero, it would ineffectually disable the light mapping, leaving you with ambient occlusion, which we'll not be using in this video tutorial. So set the bounces back to four. The skylight color is based, what this does, it allows you to control the color of the sky using a color value. Right now it's set to black, which basically, which basically if you were to bake this, the only thing I would get is the emission information, such as a color bleeding from these objects that have different colors. With that, I'll bake the scene right now to illustrate my point. We will allow Beast to bake the light map 
it would take only a few seconds because of a simple because it was a simple scene with low power of gather rays. Now, love space. I also like also its neck options. It's got an intensity, which is used as a multiplier for a skylight, which means if I were to turn this up, you notice how there is it'll basically intensify the amount of lighting you can see that is emitted from the sky. And as you see here in this base, we now have some emission. We have bounce light. We have some, we have some red wings uh, onto under the yellow ball. We also have some blue blue emission glow around the neon capsule. But setting the skylight intent color to black basically dis it essentially disables the skylighting. The next two options is bounce boost and bounce intensity. These two op these two options control how 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 intense the bouncing is in the scene. It also serves as a multiplier. Usually these options, I usually leave them, you know, at a pretty low level when I'm doing my bakes. The next option, and most important one, is final gather rays. If you're familiar with Nunto Ray or any other renderer, such as Renderman, V Ray, or even Indigo, this this controls how many light rays are allowed to be seen to be sampled. The higher the light rays, the smoother your your light map will be, but at a trade-off that you have to wait for longer render time. I usually keep this at a very low rate to test out the scene and make sure that everything is lit adequately. The next option is a contrast threshold, which also controls how smooth the light map will be. On lower settings, you are going to get more detail to the light map. On a higher setting, it was, it was, it was smooth, but you lose detail and it may lead to artifacting. Contact threshold is a pretty good option to, to play around with. I usually keep this very low in my final light map bakes. The interpolation is, um, it, it blends between the final gather rays for a smoother result. A value of zero makes it linear. A high value of one is advanced. I will usually leave this. I will usually leave these two options alone, since I since I um, sometimes will edit my light mapping inside of Photoshop. Now, ambient occlusion is something I'll never mess with in this one. The bottom here is a text server resolution. If I were to click this little box here in the game view, okay, well actually you're not gonna see it here because I didn't I did not bake a sky I did not bake any detail in the sky. So let's clear that now, and let's create let's create print skylight color. I will sample some some pop colors from the sky here, and then I'll go ahead and I'll click on resolution. What you see here, if I clean the light map, you're able to see the text cells in world space. There's little boxes here. If there's more boxes, there will be a much higher detail in the in, the, um, in your light map. But again, at the trade-off of longer render times, especially if you have many objects in the scene that are marked static. The padding basically separates the text cells between between the light maps. I'll usually I'll usually leave this at zero, depending on the, depending on the scene's detail. Now, in this bottom box here, this this will tell you the amount of time it take. The light map, I don't know if there are in the color space. Now, some notes that I did not tell you in the game tutorial is that I'm using a deferred renderer, which is a which is a rendering lighting mode in Unity, and I'm also using um, linear color space, which yields a much more realistic result. Now, let's have a let's play a little bit with this, and I'm going to go ahead and do a quick bake. You know, just to show, just to illustrate what you'll be seeing in later tutorials. If I hit big scene right now, I, I set my um, final gather rays to about 500. And then I go ahead to the skylight color to a nice blue. And also, by the way, too, if you see in the sky, it is a cube map that was made in Eon Software's view. Right now, 
beast does not know that the sky this um cube map exists. So I'm using the skylight color to to allow us to tint the world around us. So if I hit bake scene right now, it will allow beast to bake the scene out. And, and also to have this check mark called um use of forward rendering. If you're using Unity Pro and deferred renderer, you need to turn this off. It will have no effect on the scene. Other, other than using it in forward rendering, which again, I, I believe it will take away the detail from your normal map. We'll give this a few minutes to bake. Mainly because it's a very simple scene, I'm allowing you all to see the baking process and what Beast will go through when it bakes out your scene. So with this done, you have now the skylight, but you notice now how overblown you know, the color is. This is this is the reason why the skylight intensity is very, very important. This is a number, it's very almost very arbitrary. You wanna try to you wanna to try to keep this number as low as possible, especially if you're um lighting an evening scene. So right now, let's set the the bounce of the um, skylight intensity to 0.6 and we we'll hit big scene. Oh, before I continue, if you didn't notice in this folder here, Beast created a folder for you. To store your light maps. This is a folder that's created automatically, and it can be and it can be deleted after you, after you even bake your light maps. But if I, I'll show you I'll show you that now. If I delete this folder, you will you will delete the light map. So let's bake the scene again. And what you'll see now, you'll see that you'll see that very same folder pop right up under the under the name of your scene. And now, a, a few notes for you too about using the light maps in, in um, Unity. They are rendered in EXR format, which can be which can be edited inside of Photoshop. You can you can you can color tone the um, light maps. You can blur them, and basically you have full control of how your light maps will appear. You want to edit them directly, but for, for um, testing purposes, I recommend not altering the light maps until you're sure they're done. Also, if each time you bake a new light map, Beast will overwrite the old one without warning. And you see, a new folder was created under the scene, under the, um, the file name, and you have two light maps that are both near and far. You'll also see them here in the Maps tab. Now you notice now after the bake was done, you now see this beautiful blue tint on the plane surface, as well as the uh, bounce the light on other surfaces. If I go ahead and look at the back of the clock, you'll see there's a color bleed. It's very subtle, but it's there. The same thing with the blue, which also has some sort of artifact in it. I think it's because of the monitor color space I'm using with a monitor. Most monitors work in gamma space. With linear, linear space, it's more realistic and, and the light it's more physical, it's more correct lighting when you're using gamma. Now, let's do something a bit more interesting with the lighting in our scene. Let's let's um turn the sky red. You know, in fact, I love um, Martian scenes in Mars movies, and it's something I find very interesting. I would also it, it, this will also illustrate a very extreme example of how skylight color can adversely affect the feel and mood of your scene. Now, Biggs. I'm going to go ahead and select the light here, which I did not show you in the beginning of the tutorial. You can also see the objects, renderers, like mesh renderers or trains, and lights. In lights, this is, very, this is a very important option here, tweaking your lights in the light mapping tab. Some of these options will also appear in your inspector, such as color and intensity. Usually, I do here is I and also light mapping will here appear here as well. Usually, I'll usually for lights that's point lights and um, directional lights. I will usually leave those are automatic when I'm testing my light maps. During the phase of optimization, these options will change. You have real time only, which is used for, for things like sunlight and moonlight. You have automatic, in which Unity decides 
what light is. Light maps and what is real time based on distance. And the other one is beige only, which which will be useful if your lights are far away. Sometimes I'll be better automatic. The felt's intensity can also be changed independently to each individual light. Usually I leave these pretty these numbers are very arbitrary, but I leave them on the low at a low amount like one. So, and I'll show you this this um, in a in a next tutorial. The big shadows here. You can turn them off, or you have them on real time and real time soft. Usually, usually I'll usually leave this on either hard or soft shadows based on my location in the game. The shadow samples allows the number of samples for direct shadow in those surfaces. I'll usually leave this alone because if I turn this up any higher, it may incur longer render times. And speaking of render times, if I go back to the big tab. You'll see that I do have my sky like colors at the red. And the last big two forty took forty seven seconds. And you see here, the, the sky like color it it actually creates this nice beautiful bleed on all the surfaces and it blended very, very well. You notice how there's a red, some slight red bleed on the red ball. There's even a redder bleed on the red square. Which, which sometimes, if you have too much bleed, you may lose surface detail. And the same thing on this um, neon capsule, which has a which has a shader that is emissive. So this is um, pretty much the basic rundown of using beast light mapping. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you a bit more advanced techniques on how to use beast light mapper in an environment. So until then. I thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.